Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the Criterion Collection Review Series, where I'm going through my personal Criterion Collection and reviewing every movie in order of release or by spy number if you prefer. And today's movie is a little interesting because I believe it is the first time I'm reviewing a movie that I have not seen before, uh, which I'm excited to talk about my feelings on it because it was definitely a blind purchase. And that would be the 1984 punk rock sci-fi thriller comedy Repo Man, uh, which is number 654 in the collection. Um, so when I got this movie, I found it at a used bookstore for about 15 bucks, and I thought, you know, why not? I, I, I had always heard of it, and I vaguely knew what it was, but it was a Criterion movie, so I was already sold and convinced it would at least be interesting. Uh, so because of that, I am very interested to talk about my feelings on it. Um, but to begin with the plot, the film follows Otto, who is this 20-something punk living in LA with no real prospects in life, just kind of drifting through it all. Um, until one day, he is recruited by Bud, who is a repo man that tricks him into repossessing a stolen car. Uh, at first, Otto is really upset because he held the establishment and he ain't about that. Uh, but he realizes that he has nothing better to do and decides to join the team of repo men. And as they teach him their ways and skills and their trade, uh, a lot of weird things begin to happen around LA that start to converge in on each other. There's a stolen car with a killer mystery hidden in its trunk that's worth $20,000. A young woman is claiming that the FBI has killed aliens uh, right outside of LA. Bud is planning his own violent revenge against, against a rival group of repo men. And at the same time, there's a group of thugs terrorizing the city. So I will start off by saying that I don't think there's anything technically wrong with Repo Man. Uh, it is a movie that has a very unique and specific uh, style, which is to say it has no concrete style at all. Uh, it is a movie that is at once a comedy, it is at once a coming of age story, an action thriller, a sci-fi film. Uh, it just kind of encompasses everything and, 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 and nothing at the same time, but with very interesting and memorable results. Uh, I think the film does an incredible job of balancing all of these tones, and a big help in that is the actors, especially Emilio Estevez and Harry Dean Stanton, who are able to play their characters fairly straight, but still having an odd wink and a nod sort of mentality to how they play these characters, and they seem very aware of what kind of movie they're in and just how ridiculous the whole thing is. Um, at the same time, the side actors are also really great, playing a lot of memorable characters that maybe only get one or two lines, but they just really stick with you with how bizarre they are. Like, there's this homeless man that hangs out with the, re with the repo men who just has all these weird facts and conspiracy theories. Do my best thinking on the bus. That's how come I don't drive, see? You don't even know how to drive. I don't want to know how. I don't want to learn, see? The more you drive, the less intelligent you are. Uh, you have the guy that's actually driving the car, the, the stolen car worth $20,000 that just is overacting to a glorious degree. Uh, it's all just very interesting and very engaging in, a, in an odd way. I will also say that the movie is very well shot, especially for the type of low budget they had. Uh, it seems to really capture this grungy, dirty, punk vibe um, that was hitting um, um, LA in the 80s. And you kind of get that sense of just how low they are and, you know, sort of the, the, the economic disparity within the city, uh, which is definitely a key theme of the film, this being in the middle of the Reagan administration. Um, also, Alex Cox, the director, is British, so clearly he has the sort of, you know, outside view of, of America and of L.A. where he studied film. So, sorry if this seems a little different than the rest of the video, I thought about this after I filmed it. But one of the things that I forgot to mention about Repo Man is how the look of the film not only is grungy and dirty and punk, but it makes LA feel dystopian at times. There's so many empty, barren streets with trash and dirt everywhere. And this apocalyptic view of LA, which I think today especially is seen as this haven of culture and you know, uh, hipsterism even, and pretentiousness and art, uh, you know, it gives it this very underground, dirty look. And I think that that worldview makes a lot of sense, especially when you consider the time period that Repo Man was made, which is the early to mid 80s, uh, where you're in the Reagan administration and you're also in 
the third decade of the Cold War that seems at no end and the threat of nuclear uh, annihilation, you know, is, is still prevalent in your mind every single day. And it gives this movie a very unique, uh, fantastical uh, sense and vibe. It feels less like a punk movie or a sci-fi thriller and more like a Mad Max movie at the end of the day, which again makes it so memorable and so interesting. And I will say that I think that um, this unique style is what makes the film so interesting. And a lot of the very unique and, you know, sort of off the wall choices it makes are what make it a memorable, worthwhile movie. Uh, there's this reoccurring gag where all of the labels for food and any products um, except liquor all have generic labels. So when someone buys a beer, they're buying a white a can with a white label that just says beer. You want cigarettes, it's just cigarettes. You want canned soup, it just says soup. Like things like that. And it's just a very bizarre gag that only gets funnier the more you see it, like the lengths they go to to make that joke work. It's just very ridiculous and very funny to me. Um, it's a movie that really has its own voice and goes to the beat of its own drum. Uh, and so it's no surprise that it has become a cult hit. And I think that that, in a way, really encompasses the punk aesthetic that it is striving for and I think ultimately accomplishes. Where instead of trying to be punk, right, by having the iconography, by having the music, by, you know, spouting off random catchphrases or just, you know, whatever they think a punk would like, the film just is punk in its essence, because what's more punk than going against the grain and doing your own thing, you know? Punk isn't being violent and deadly and, and angry. Punk is finding your own way to express those emotions and these feelings that you have and to really criticize the culture and the political climate that you're in, which is really what Repo Man is going for. And while I can really acknowledge and admire the film's creativity, I can't say I thoroughly enjoyed this movie, unfortunately. And I think that it I think that it is at no fault of the film. I think that again, the choices it makes are inspired and interesting uh, and very engaging for the right audience. Unfortunately, I don't believe that I am the right audience for this movie. I think that the worldview that it portrays and the way it reaches it, its conclusions just doesn't fully work for me. Um, and I can't tell if it's a pacing issue, if it's just, you know, I was born all, all over 10 years, 15 years after this movie came out, so a lot of it doesn't really pertain to me or relate to me in any way. And in general, I've just never really been into the punk scene in my life. And so it's difficult for me to really uh, fully get on board with it or fully relate to it. But I do know people who would love this movie, and I mean... Clearly it has enough love and care behind it that it got this really great release from Criterion. So I don't want to sit here and say it's a bad movie just because I didn't like it. I think it is a great movie that has a lot going for it uh, and I would recommend it to other people. It just isn't for me personally. But of course, you know, no shame to Alex Cox and the crew and anybody that worked on it because they really made something special, something unique that really stands out from the crowd of other low-budget exploitation films around this time. So while I may not be the biggest fan of Repo Man, if you are a big fan or you watch it and you become a fan, this release from Criterion is going to really fulfill any any itch you could have to learn more about this movie. Um, there are plenty of fantastic interviews, including a roundtable discussion between Alex Cox and some of those producers that really go in depth about the production of the film, the difficulty they had releasing it, uh, the failure it was upon release until the soundtrack did really well since it featured a lot of up-and-coming and popular underground punk artists. Um, there's also a lot of interviews with the actors, especially a lot of the side actors, sort of catching up with them today and seeing how the movie has impacted their lives and what it was like to film it. Um, and at the same time, they get a very bizarre interview with Harry Dean Stanton where he is just completely unhinged and at points is just going off on the interviewer about random tangents and, topic, uh, and topics. It's kind of insane. Um, similar to the release for Brazil, this also includes the censored TV version, which Cox himself oversaw. So whenever they have to censor language, it's actually dubbed over with ridiculous phrases. Um, I didn't get a chance to watch it myself, but I think it'd be a lot of fun for fans of the movie. 
Um, at the same time, there's an audio commentary which features Cox and a lot of the cast and crew just, again, reminiscing about the making of the film, telling stories, things along those lines. I also think Repo Man has a really incredible booklet. So, you, of course, you have the sleeve here, um, which is a, so much art and detail, and again, it's really capturing that punk, you know, grimy vibe of the whole thing. Um, but then you also get, well, also the inside here, and you see the disc, that's kind of how those generic labels will look. Um, but then you have this booklet here that is, you can see, fairly thick, um, that is made with a lot of love and care, and it's just so interestingly well put together. Uh, first, you have this essay from Sam McFeeters um, that really goes in-depth about the film's troubled release and its production and what makes it such a special and interesting movie, which helped me to appreciate it more after my, my initial viewing. Um, we also have in here a collection of Alex Cox's original script notes and storyboards. Uh, things like this. Uh, well, I'll show it off a little longer. Um, and so and this is the artwork that really inspired Alex Cox in his vision for the movie. And it really gives insight onto where his headspace was with making it and why it was, you know, why it came out the way that it did. Um, you also get scripts, like parts of the script, if I can find it, like right here uh just a, again a lot of love and care put into this a lot of you know a, a lot of great stuff for fans of this movie um including an interview with an actual repo man that inspired the film so overall uh, repo man as a movie isn't necessarily for me it is a very interesting unique standout movie that i probably won't forget anytime soon uh but it's not something for me personally that I would openly rewatch uh, too many times, uh, but I do highly recommend it if anything I have said piques your interest, if anything about the 80s punk scene or the low budget era of 80s films appeals to you, I think this will really, really be up your alley. And then if you end up enjoying it, this Criterion release is one of their best and uh, kind of is the prime example of a great uh, Criterion with a lot of love and a lot of care put into it. Um, but either way, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And make sure to come back next time where we're going to be talking about Guillermo del Toro's, I would say, international debut with The Devil's Backbone. Uh, either way, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.